Alrighty, let's jump right into it. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Thursday, January 11, 2024, and welcome right, to, right that won't work, all right, uh, redo. So welcome to our complimentary showcase on the flip trade. This has been a long time coming as far as a class that I've been putting together and wanting to share with you guys. The goal of this course is to simplify how we read the price charts. Um, you know, just an amazing turnout um, as far as getting people to sign up for this complimentary showcase. Over a hundred people registered. Absolutely incredible. And what that is telling me is that if there's a hundred of us in the room, we're going to be coming in uh, shortly. We all have one thing in common, and that is that we are still working on putting the pieces of the puzzle together and how we look at the price charts. So I'm going to try my best to simplify that during today's showcase and then give you a glimpse into my upcoming three-day event, The Flip Trade. So welcome, everyone. Thank you all for, for joining me. Let's jump right into it and feel free to use the chat. Everyone should be able to, to type there getting a lot of responses. So as much as we can make this interactive as possible, I always love that, getting your feedback and seeing uh, what you're interested in. Daryl, good to have you here too. Very nice. Yeah, you've been doing great in the coaching session, so I'm very happy for you. All righty, so the flip trade, let's jump into it. Welcome to the flip trade showcase. Get ready for a whole new way of looking at the price charts trading from how I learned it up till, you know, a couple of years ago, and even still how it's taught to this day, way overcomplicated. It's confusing. People don't know which strategies to take in order to trade the price charts. So I wanted to take my experience in teaching and trading, put it all together and give you a more simplified way of teaching and learning how to trade in the markets. Trey, good to have you here. Thanks for joining me. So I created this event to help struggling traders simplify the way they read the, the charts. I mean, there's a million different ways that you can look at the price charts, um, different time frames, different you know shapes and patterns that we can view. So how is anyone supposed to really you know excel at trading if there's so many different ways to process it? So many different strategies up there, it can become very confusing. So my goal in having the flip trade and having the showcase is to get you all sort of exposed to that new way and simplified way of looking at the price charts. So question for the room, what do you feel is your biggest challenge with trading? Now from my live trading classes, my coaching sessions, I get so many different responses. It's you know, incredible that, you know, as traders and we're trying to learn and improve ourselves that we still find that there's challenges um, in the way from us being confident, from us being consistent. So if you don't mind, just type in the chat, what do you feel is your biggest challenge with trading? So take a second to kind of ponder that. Um, and then I will read them if you guys don't mind. And then I am going to be incorporating those comments throughout the showcase today and during the three-day event. See, Michael says, always emotional component, getting better, not being emotional. Huge thing, right? Especially when you're in trades and you see it going against you and you get that, you know, gut-wrenching feeling in your stomach. Um, that's a big one for sure. So we'll touch on that. Patrick says, discipline, consistency. Yes. Yeah, so that's going to tie into, you know, having... The discipline is hard, sticking with your rules, having a trade plan is important, you know, consistency. I think all that also comes with just experience and trusting the method that you're trading and how you're looking at the price charts. You know, you can't trade someone else's method if you don't believe it, if you don't understand it. So in the flip trade showcase today um, and in my three-day class, I want to make sure everyone is completely on the same page with why we're looking at certain formations, why we're looking at certain candles, all of those need to tie together in understanding why we're trading, what we're looking at, so we can have that consistency moving forward. I like that answer. Having a method I can feel confident. In. Yeah, exactly, Michael. Um, kind of going back to, to Patrick's and you want to, the only way you can be confident is if you trust it, 
you've seen it work time and time again, you're, you know, trading it, at least, you know, starting off in SIM and seeing it work and ultimately making it your own. So completely agree with you. It's hard to find those different strategies that you can sort of relate to. Again, that's going to be the point of the flip trade is giving you something that makes sense time and time again that you can stick with over and over. Let's see, consistency. All right, so that's a big one. Discipline and emotion. Seeing, we're seeing a lot of um, duplicates, which is interesting. Yeah, d discipline, emotion, trusting myself. Yeah, so I feel like all of these, notice everything that you're saying all ties back to the emotions of trading. So it's not, no one's saying, or not as many people, um, I think till I got to Shillian's, but no one's really saying, I don't know where to get into a trade. I'm looking to stay in trades longer. But a lot of the answers that I'm seeing boil down to the emotions and that we're not trusting what we're trading. So there's some underlying um, sort of just uncertainty of reading the price charts. That's where we want to clarify exactly what we're looking at so you can trust your process and implement it time and time again. It shouldn't be guessing. We should have a very systemic step-by-step -step approach for how we look at the price charts and how we trade. Let's see, knowing the direction, uptrend or downtrend. It's a good one, Chilean. Uh, That one was one of my struggles back in the day, but the two candle flip is gonna be a good indicator for gauging what the trend is. Finding two candle flip that holds on smaller time frame. That's a big one too, Mark. So we're going to be showing this on all different time frames. So for those of you who do swing trading, this method applies to you. If you do day trading um, and you do like going down to the five minute and one minute charts, this process still applies to you as well. It's all about, again, that two candle flip, but we do need to kind of step out of the weeds, see the bigger picture of what's going on on the higher time frames. And for me, that's where I like to splice in on the smaller time frames to look for some of those day trades. So that'll be something that we'll touch on as well. All right, so thank you for posting your answers in the chat. So I wanna just kind of give a little bit of background of something that stuck with me when I was learning how to trade. Um, and it's really the price charts battle and that it's a battle going back and forth between the buyers and the sellers. I know when I've explained this to some students, they sort of, they can relate to this analogy. Uh, the price charts show a battle between buyers and sellers. When you can visualize who is in control, you can anticipate how to trade. So you can also kind of think of it as a video game. You know, you're kind of, you have two players fighting, one, you know, seeing which one is the stronger player going back and forth. It's the same thing on the price charts. When we can see that it's a battle going back and forth between the buyers and sellers, once we can understand how to read that and visualize that on the price charts, then we know whether to look for long trades if the buyers are in control or whether to look for short trades if the sellers are in control. Using 100 tick chart, yeah. So you'll see all this ties, all this ties into Pretty much any time frame, tick charts included, high time frames. So as long as we end up finding that two candle flip zone, you'll see that you'll likely get some of those longer running moves. See, when getting to a zone, I have selected waiting for that change of direction in the chart. I like that. So let's see. I'm just going to read it one more. When getting to a zone, I have selected waiting for that change of direction in that chart. Yeah, so the change of direction is where we start to see more of that confirmation that price is changing direction. So that's all about how we read the price charts, that when we can visualize that change in direction, that's when we want to start looking to get in on the trades at the origin of those turning points. So it's also a way I visualize it as the price chart as a map and following the steps. So each candlestick on a price chart means something. So for me, a lot of you guys know that I like the daily time frame just as a foundation for where I'm looking for long trade opportunities and short trade opportunities. Each daily candlestick shows where the buyers are at and where the sellers are at and who is in control. So it's about putting those pieces together and sort of following the day-to-day -day steps to see who is in control. When we can understand the back and forth pressure of buyers versus sellers via candlesticks, 
we can locate high probability entry points based on who is in control. One step at a time equals one candle at a time. Nothing should be overlooked. This is something that I do think gets overlooked a lot is that when we go to the price charts, I know a lot of traders try to just go down to the 15 minute or the five minute and start trading, but they can't even read a daily chart. So that's where I like to kind of step back out and understand, you know, that battle that goes back and forth between the buyers and sellers. So bringing up the micro S&P, for example, really big uptrend that we've seen over the past several months. So hopefully we've been finding those ways to splice in long on this uptrend. You'll notice that at many of these key turning points where price pulled back and then we had those rallies to the upside, at the origin of those moves is what's going to be that specific group of candles that I'm looking for time and time again, which is what I call the two candle flip zone. It's simply a red candle coming down, followed by a green candle that closes within the high and low of the red candle. When you isolate that, you'll notice that what happened after was a long running move to the upside. So the difference between this approach versus looking for zones is substantial because if we can find a setup that's already formed, then we want to be more active in getting in on the immediately following candle. So imagine seeing this on your price charts where you had your two candle flip zone, uh, which is what I came up with. Then the next day you look to get long anticipating that to be the turning point in the markets. And how we visualize that as being, you know, the battle back and forth between the buyers and sellers is that the red candle coming down shows that the sellers are in control, pushing price down all the way to the point where the buyers start to take out the sellers and regain control. So that shift between red to green is showing that the sellers were pushing back to the downside, but then the green candle back up is showing that the buyers are beginning to take out the sellers. Once all the sellers have been removed and eliminated, we get those explosive moves to the upside. So two candle flip there, long running move to the upside. We can step back. Here's another red and green candle. That's what we call the two candle flip zone. Notice immediately after long running move to the upside. Coming back even further. And coming down to the origin of this move to the upside. Red candle, green candle, as long as it closes within the high and low of the red candle, you're good to go. Two candle flip zone, long running move to the upside. So what I've found is that when you find this group of candles, we want to be more actively aggressive and actually, you know, for day traders out there and looking to be more active and getting in sooner rather than later to participate in this uptrending move. Now, for me, I haven't liked the zones in the past because, and you know, so many traders out there where you seem to find a really good zone, maybe you went down here, I don't know, let's see, that's a good spot. Maybe here was a spot where I found a zone on a smaller time frame, and then your zone gets completely broken through. But you know how you were taught, you said, well, this one had all the qualifications of a zone. It was however you wanna describe a zone that you've learned it up till now. You know, it probably met the criteria, but then when price comes to your zone, you get stopped out. And that's where some of the, the emotion comes into it is that you're choosing zones from way too far that have happened way you know previous to, to current time that by the time price comes back to that zone the trend is completely different the market conditions are different everything has changed which makes zones an actually elevated risk of a trading strategy to take so i do use the two candle flip for a zone type in the way that we trade and that you'll see in uh, my three-day class but using it as more of an active strategy to participate in some of these trending moves. And then we go down to the smaller timeframes to find those key entry points. 
So Janet's question is, is the length of the wick important? Nope. So all you need is, and all that matters is color. So red, green, and then you just want the close of the green to be within the high and low of the previous red candle. So because that closed right below the wick, actually closed one tick below the high of that red candle, that's the two candle flip. Again, in understanding why you know this led to such a big move to the upside is that the sellers were pushing price down. Think of that battle again where the sellers are in control, pushing price down, no more buyers. But then all of a sudden we see price open and start to push up and take out the sellers that were previously there. So that shift from being more of a down move to then the buyer starting to take out the sellers that were there shows that the control aspect has shifted to the, the buyers. We should start looking for our long trade setups. Now we see this time and time again. The one I wanted to point out today, you know, with the, the reports that came out this morning is that we had a two candle flip on the top side here. Green candle coming up, red candle closing within the range of the green candle. That is our two candle flip where we look for our short trades. Now notice that when price reacted this morning, had a lot of that volatility with the reports, we spiked right up into that two candle flip zone and change direction. I'm using the daily chart as sort of just a starting point so you can see how strong it is and how well it works time and time again, that when we find those two candle flips, we get those long running moves. You know, we can continue to, to back test and say, you know, from this low point to this high point, would have loved to, to go along here around 42, 46, ride it up to 4420. It's in a pretty decent move on the, the S P. And then you ask yourself, what was at the origin of that move? Red candle coming down, green candle closing within the range of the red candle. That's our two candle flip, long running move to the upside. So again, this is a more active strategy that we're monitoring the charts and participating as price is moving day to day, or if, we, if we're looking for the two candle flip on the hourly, looking for it in that way. Um, and then as we look for trades to the downside, simply doing the same thing. So very nice move to the downside. And what was at the origin of that down move was our two candle flip. Green candle coming up, red candle closing within the range of the green candle. So you'll notice time and time again where we find these flip patterns at the origin of some of these long running moves to the upside and to the downside. And that's ultimately our goal of where we want to be getting into some of those trades. Again, zones for me in the past and where I found a lot of traders struggle is that they choose zones and then price completely blows through them. Uh, let's see if we can kind of go back a bit. So let's see. Now here's a spot where I may have taken a zone. Actually, that one looks like it would have worked. Let's see. Here's a spot where price dropped. We had a small base candle there. And then we rallied. So maybe some people would see this as sort of like a drop base rally zone per se, but then it failed. So again, the issue with zones is that we're getting in too late to the game when the market conditions are different. There may be reports. There's all these different factors that is going to impact your zones if you're going back too far, which is why a more active strategy and participating with the two candle flip can get you in some of these trades set up sooner. Let's see, I see a couple more questions. The close of the reverse candle doesn't have to close in the body, only the range of the first candle. Yes, exactly, Tom. So simply want it to close 
within, I think this example here is kind of what you're talking about where we have a red candle coming down and the green candle closes within the high and low of the red candle. So it doesn't need to close in the body. You just use the wicks to see if it's that two candle flip zone. See, and then Michael's question, can you explain the significance of the close in the range rather than outside it? Yes, so the significance of that is that when it closes inside, we'll talk about sort of as we go through this and then during the three-day event, is that we use the wicks to gauge our entry points. Now, just a little bit more detail, now, if we say that two candle flip is often at the origin of a long running move, then the wicks are showing us where the sellers are still left over. If I'm saying, hey, here's where my buyers are at because I have a two candle flip, but the top wicks show that there's some sellers standing in the way. When we close inside the range, we often get those wicks, which can give us our higher probability entry points to splice into those trade those trades. Whereas if we closed outside it, then it's just a little bit more challenging to find those ways to splice in. So I like to see the close in the range just because then once we see the wicks coming into play, we can gauge our entry points. So then this should all make a little bit more sense. Again, one step at a time, one candle at a time, nothing should be overlooked as far as looking for those two candle flips. So just a little bit more detail, what is the flip trade? The flip trade is an event I created to help traders simplify the way they read the price charts and build confidence maneuvering the markets. So we want to simplify and we want to build our confidence maneuvering and trading. You know, that ties back to a lot of the, the answers that I saw you guys put in the chat previously was all tied back to a lack of confidence because you're lacking the discipline, the consistency, you know, not trusting yourself and taking those trades. So by building up your confidence, you'll be able to do that once you start trusting how to read the price charts and being able to read them with a whole new way of seeing things. The event focuses on a specific group of candles that is often found at key turning points in the markets, which is my own two candle flip zone. So here's the detail that I was going over previously. Just a little bit more detail here. Again, our long trades, we want our red than green. The green candle must close inside the range of the red candle. If we're looking for short trades, we want to see a green than red. Red candle must close inside the green candle. Alrighty, so what assets and time frames can the two candle flip be used on? All assets, so I've worked with students who trade stocks, students who trade futures, students who trade Forex, and even a couple options um, traders as well who can use some option strategies once they understand where those key turning points in the markets, you can implement your strategies based off where the two candle flips are at. And then all time frames can be used for day trading as well as swing trading. It's for all students, primarily you know, students who have been through other trading educations who are still struggling. Again, I'm just amazed that we had over 100 people sign up for this showcase, which simply tells me that you know, there's still work to be doing on the teaching side of things and simplifying so that we can all be consistent in our trading and confident in what we're looking for. So you may have seen this. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Appreciate that. You may have seen this from some of the, the marketing I was doing and some of the advertising. So I gathered a couple problems that I've seen time and time again from students. And so the problems on the left, a potential reason why that problem may be occurring is in the middle. And then the solution for those problems is on the right side. So I covered up all this um, during the marketing phase, but now I'm going to go through with you and kind of go through each of these and show you how we can touch on each of these problems. The first one kind of touched on a little bit already is that students saying my zones don't work, they get blown through, their zones you know, may look like the perfect rally base rally or the perfect um, 
drop base drop, whatever kind of zones that you're looking for. It could be one formed on high volume. It could be in the right location. It could have every single odds enhancer under the moon, but it still doesn't work. So potential reason why your zones may not be working is that taking zones in this context is a delayed trading technique. Again, I mentioned if you're looking at zones from, you know, way, you know, from a long time ago, and you're looking to try to take those zones, well, there could be some, you know, new events coming out in, in the world, some, you know, big announcements, economic reports, all these different things can mean that your zones may fail more often than not. So this has been a big problem. The solution is active trade analysis using the two candle flip. So I've gone over that a little bit with the micro S&P. So on the left-hand side, I have the micro S&P 500 on the daily chart. It's actually the one that I went over on my charts here. So two candle flips, red then green, long running move to the upside. So we're participating actively by finding those zones, those two candle flips, and then looking to get in as the move is going to the upside, which is that, that flip from being more of a downtrend to the switch to then transitioning to an uptrend. Alternative zone strategies, no matter how you may find a zone. This one, I just took an example of silver on the daily chart. Here's an area where you may have seen this as a drop base rally zone if you wanted to qualify that and price failed. So we're not looking for zones as much. We we will as we go throughout the three-day course, um, but overall taking zones in this context, is it's more likely to fail. We want to get that confirmation and conviction of price moving in the direction we're looking for by looking for our two candle flip zones. Second problem, I get stopped out frequently at the nine, oops, at the 9.30 a.m. Eastern time market open. I've seen this one a lot and I definitely want to touch on it. Um, so potential reason why you're getting stopped out in the, the morning session is that this is when most other traders are participating. A lot of volatility at the 9.30 a.m. Eastern time open. Actually, I just want to ask the, the room, how many of you guys have either of these problems where your zones don't work or you experience that volatility at the 9.30 market open? Anyone kind of relate to either of those two so far? Michael, yeah. Anyone else? Just seeing kind of where the, the problems lie in this room. Zones don't always work. All right. Yeah, so that's where the, the two candle flip will come into play. And then if you are kind of getting chopped up at the 9.30 a.m. market open, because that's when there's the most volatility, the most trading going on, the big banks and institutions are highly involved at that time. So the solution, which a lot of people find interesting, is to get a head start and identify setups at the 6 p.m. Eastern futures open. So futures trade practically 24 hours a day. There's just that one hour time slot between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern where they don't trade. So at 6 p.m. Eastern, a new daily candle forms, which is where we really want to pay most attention to, is if we can get into a trade sooner by getting in at the 6 p.m. Eastern open, why are we going to wait till the following day when those trade opportunities may have already passed? So keep that in mind. A uh, common misconception I've heard from a lot of my coaching students is that they say, well, I don't trade the overnight session because it's low volume, less liquidity. You know, the banks and institutions aren't involved then, so it's greater risk. And for me, that's an interesting misconception because so many times when we look at the daily charts, those entry points were right when the futures market opened. Now, let me see if I can find one. For example, so for example, this two candle flip, green then red, and just staying with the micro S&P on the daily chart for now. And notice that when the futures market opened the following day, 
we pretty much opened and went straight down. So on this day, if we were waiting for the futures market to open, or sorry, if we were waiting for the, the regular trading session to open at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, we likely missed probably the majority of that move. By the time we're getting into the trade, we're late, and that's why we get so much volatility, so much chop is because we're late to the game. So I always encourage students that if you haven't been looking at the 6 p.m. open, to keep an eye on that, some of those key entry points happen at the 6 p.m. Eastern time open. If you know the markets have already left without you by the time the regular trading session opens the next day, that's when the volatility comes in, you're getting chopped out, you're trying to participate, but you've already missed the majority of the move. So keep that in mind if that is a struggle that you've seen, where if you're, you know, find yourself at the, the market open at 9.30 Eastern and you're experiencing that volatility, potentially the trade setup you were looking for already happened in the overnight session. So we do want to get a head start and identify setups at the 6 p.m. Eastern time futures open. Let's see, hey Ellie, uh, Kate, do you wait for a confirmation candle for the flip before entering the trade? Good questions. That's going to tie more into entry point, and we do go into that in more detail in the, the three-day course. But yes, yeah, so typically you have your two candle flip, and then you want to trade in the direction in which it's flipping. So I already have a bias going into the following day of where I should be looking. But then that confirmation is potentially going to come once we see a breakout trade opportunity. Do we have a two candle flip zone on a smaller time frame? Different things like that will go into more detail because there's different sort of confirmation um, ways that we can look to, to splice in with our entry point. But yes, we want to see that confirmation that the flip is actually happening. So the confirmation occurs either with a breakout trade or a zone entry, which would be a different two candle flip on a smaller time frame. Yeah, algos are definitely always working. Uh, but yeah, keep an eye on that. The market open a lot of times at 6 p.m. Eastern time. That's when we want to get into some of those trades. We don't want to be waiting hours and hours and hours and the markets have already left without us. Hey, Demetrios, uh, I got in late. Is this used on daily only? So no, we are looking at the daily chart for now, but I'll drop down to the smaller time frames, and you'll see it just as well. So since we haven't done it yet, let me drop down to the hourly. And... Once you start seeing it, you're not going to unsee it, which is the cool thing. But can you see at the origin of this rally from about three hours ago, red and green, closed within the range, followed by big move to the upside. Keep it simple there. Let's come back a little bit about this one, red then green. Close is inside the range of the red candle. Two candle flip. That's where price came down and found that two candle flip zone. So we're seeing real time down on the hourly chart. Again, it doesn't apply just to daily. It applies to all time frames. And you're seeing it work now. Two candle flip, big move to the upside. So getting in on that breakout when it's first form, taking that move to the upside or waiting for the pullback to that two candle flip. Let's go back a little bit. Does this qualify as a two candle flip? Red, green. Does the green close within the range of the red? You can tell me. Red, green. Green close in the range of the red candle. So would that be a two candle flip zone? Yeah, nice job, guys. Again, it might look a little funny, but really, again, keep it simple. Just the colors and where it's closing. And you can see price came down and found that two-candle flip zone. 
How about the top side? Green then red is the reverse. Two candle flip. Right stop there, change direction. And I'm just picking Mike Russ and P, just taking what's been going on, you know, the past couple days on the hourly chart. Let's see. Red, green. So again, they do work as zones where price can come down. And you can look to take it that way. What I tend to favor is taking it after it's formed. So when you have the red and green and you see that being formed, taking it on that move to the upside. Because which one had the better trade opportunity going from right when it was formed, once you saw it on the hourly chart, taking it from there to the high point and getting that move or taking it as a zone entry and getting that move. So once you start to test this and see this, you'll notice that taking it after it's formed can often give you some of those longer running moves versus the zones. Again, why I'm not a huge fan of zone entries like this is just that it can be a little bit more elevated risk. Again, here, red and green, that group of candles formed right at the extreme origin of that move to the upside. So that two candle flip was present, and that was the reason why price started at 47.50, rallied up to 48, almost 48.50. So about a 100-point move all started with the two candle flip zone. Let's see, I'm just making, going back to the comments. Does the first candle need to close outside the prior candle before the flip candle? Let me read that one again, Ken, give me one sec. Does the first candle need to close outside the prior candle before the flip? Does the first candle need to close outside the prior candle? No. So again, that doesn't matter. All that the first candle you just want to be red and then you just focus on the second candle which you want to be green and the close in the red so you don't need to look at the candle that came before it you just want to see the red and green the close in the range and then look for that momentum move to the upside see so, hey Torrey, let's see would you get in at 47.90.21 yeah so that's going to go more towards the entry point you know, just one method is taking a breakout trade. This was kind of a similar example before. Um, you know, the wicks are showing where the sellers are coming in and pushing price down. So if we mark that with a red box or a pink box to show that that's the remaining sellers, look to take it on a breakout above those wicks. Maybe not 4790.21, like right there, but wait for it to clear those top wicks I would say taking it on that breakout above 47.94. Hey, Nancy, good to see you. Can you show us flip zones that failed and why? Yes. Oh, that's a good one. Good question, Nancy. Can you show us flip zones that failed and why? That is a whole section um, in the three-day event is two candle flip zones that fail and, and why. So it's funny that you're mentioning it. That's going to be a little bit more... How should I say this? A little bit more advanced, but I'll give you one illustration. Um, for example, we had in this up move, we had a green candle coming up, red candle closed within the green. So that was a, a short two candle flip zone and price kept rallying to the upside. So this one failed because price had the green and the red, so we were looking for a down move, but instead it kept going higher. Now, Nancy or anyone else, could any of you guys give a potential reason why that two candle flip short failed and went higher instead? Someone mentioned this before. Nancy says momentum, yeah. Momentum's good. Let's see. Uh, didn't break below the wick. Good job, Michael. Yes, yeah, so we didn't break 
below. So we didn't really get that confirmation to the downside. Let's see, drop base rally, then rally base rally. There you go, you could see it that way. Needed to enter at the bottom of the wick, potentially. That'll be, I wouldn't say at the, yeah. It's a little bit more detail again in the, the entry point. So we'll talk about that in the, the three-day event. Um, kind of the one that I tell people of why these ones fail is because we're in an uptrend, right? So trend is up. So we will what we'll do is make the distinction during the course is what's the trend? How do we identify it? And that if we do see a short setup for a two candle flip zone, that simply could just be a correction, just a slight pullback before that next wave to the upside. So we'll make those distinctions. Again, not every two candle flip works. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, we'll incorporate trend into that aspect and also understanding is this a topping pattern or is this simply a slight correction before the next impulse wave to the upside. Let's see, I'm just going back to the comments again. Andrew said looking left. Do you use this on tick or share bar charts or only time-based? Janet, you can use it on any chart you'd like. It's all the same because the concept is the same as far as, you know, even if we went down, let's say to a, let's just go down to the one minute. And just to see sort of that more volatile price action. So I'm not down on the one minute time frame. The one that stands out to me is this one here where we have a red and green candle close. That's our two candle flip. Two candle flip on the one minute time frame. The best opportunity to take the trade was on that momentum move to the upside. So it's that momentum kind of reversal trade where we stop going down and then start going up. But then the other opportunity is taking it on the retest. But notice the retest, a little bit shorter of a move, which is why the main goal is to get in right as it's formed and then participate on that longer running up move versus waiting. You know, some of these zones may, may be waiting days, you may, may be waiting weeks. Sometimes, you know, price may never even come back to your zones. So that's, again, another reason why I'm not a fan of zones is because a lot of times price doesn't even come back to them. So we need to find a more kind of aggressive active strategy to get in when we see these flips being formed. What about when it bases sideways for a while? So when it bases sideways for a while. Different visuals with that, it kind of depends. Usually the basing sideways, a little bit different, is just more kind of order accumulation. We're in an uptrend if we're basing sideways. We look for that momentum continuation move to the upside, but that's where if you are basing sideways for a bit, wait for that two candle flip to form, and then look for that next wave to the upside. Let's see. I think I'm getting most of them. Let's see, drop base rally with a... BRR was taught to me as a picture perfect zone. Yeah, I know I kind of learned that too. Just be careful with, again, the zone entries because a lot of times they fail based on the market conditions, economic reports coming out. So be careful with the zones, which is why this strategy can be a way to get in more actively with the trend. Could you break it down from a daily to see smaller time to confirm? Yes, Demetrios. And that's what we'll do during the three-day event is typically the daily is a good foundation just to see what's going on, get a feel for the trend. Are we in a correction? Are we in an impulse wave? And then we'll go down to the smaller time frames to confirm our entry points. Oh, rally base rally, picture perfect zone. Yeah. Sometimes those work from my history. Sometimes they don't. Um, yeah, just a, a different strategy with this. You know, that's more waiting for zones, whereas this is more kind of getting in with those momentum moves. All right, let's keep going. All right, the next one. Okay, so illustration here. Again, get stopped out frequently at the 9.30 a.m. market open. Solution, 
get a head start at the 6 p.m. Eastern time futures open. So here's an illustration here. I have the micro S&P futures, 10 minute time frame. I marked the area where we had the futures market open at 6 p.m. Eastern. So we opened here on the micro S&P. And then by the time the stock market opened at 9.30 Eastern, we were all the way up here. So if we had a long bias and we saw those two candle flips, we should have been looking to get in down here, not up here and not waiting for the stock market to open at 930 because you've already missed the move. And by the time you're trading up here, notice that price came back down. It started getting real choppy. Big issue with the choppiness is if you're not getting in at the best locations. Um, so if entry point is one of your issues, I would say look at those key turning points in the markets. Look for the two candle flip. If you're getting in too late, you're probably already past the, the main point where we should have gotten in a little bit sooner. All right, here's another one. I let my losing trades run and take small profits. Does this apply to anyone here? Let my losing trades run and take small profits. Applicable, not applicable. Not so much. In the past, I've heard a couple people lately that do this one. So I know, Michael, I, I that might be the case here. So we want to lie about that one. Yeah. Uh, this one, it all boils down to if you're letting your losing trades run, you don't have a set risk in place. And I always say set a dollar amount for the max risk you're willing to take per trade. Um, if you're giving your risk wiggle room, that's that's really bad and you shouldn't be doing that. Make sure you, you cap your risk, let your winners run. So if you're letting your losers run and you're taking small profits, we got to be doing the opposite. So potential reason you don't have a set trade plan. So the solution B, create and follow a simplified step-by-step -step trade plan. Yeah, I think most students tr trade with a stop from what I've seen and you need a stop on every single trade. Um, I've just heard some horror stories will, where they'll move it down as it's going against them, which we should not be doing. We should, we have our stops in place for a reason at a very specific spot either based on the chart patterns or based on our dollar amount that we're willing to risk per trade. Um, but overall, having a trade plan is going to be important. We'll create a standard one during the three-day event. This is actually one I did for one of my coaching students, but we'll be doing it during the three-day class. I just blurred out some of the, the information that I gave her. But you can see, broke it down step-by-step, step, make, it, make it simple, um, had the the flip zones as an illustration there, having rules in place, you know, her profit per trade, she was looking to make $200 per trade. Her risk was $50, three stop outs per day. So having those rules in place can help you be consistent with your trading moving forward. And if consistency is an issue, then having a trade plan that works for you and that you, you like and makes sense is going to be the first step. And again, we'll we'll incorporate this during the, the three-day event. All right, number four, my successful trades are short-lived. So if your successful trades are short-lived, potentially you're going against the trend. So if you're getting a small move, say you're going long and you get a small bounce and then price stops you out, take a bigger look at the trend. You may be trading against the trend and that's where the two candle flip can also come into play. So the two candle flip can also be a good indication of what the trend is. Here is the micro NASDAQ on the 15 minute time frame. Here we had a two candle flip buy zone. And we had another one here, another one here. So we look to trade in the context in which we're forming those two candle flips. So if trend is an issue, looking for those two candle flips can give you that gauge as far as where we're looking for the momentum to be going. And then our last one, breakout trades go against me quickly. Does this apply to anyone? I think this was one of my big ones back in the day was when the breakout trades would work and then they would quickly stop me out and go against me very fast. 
Does this one apply to anyone else this morning? Yeah, especially with the reports too. You know, it's tricky um, trading around those. All right, so potential reason, unable to identify opposing targets. So this is a big run. Um, if you are taking breakouts when you have a sort of an obstacle in the way, then your breakout trade is going to fail and turn against you. So the solution is learning more about the fake out breakout strategy. So we gotta be aware of when is a breakout more likely to be successful versus when is one gonna break out a little bit, get a lot of the longs in if we're breaking out to the upside and then quickly reverse against you. So two different strategies. One is a breakout trade strategy and two is a fake out breakout strategy. Matrios says, yeah, Let's see, don't do breakouts and always wait to see report. There you go, yeah. Wait to see the report, kind of avoid that volatility. So I'm giving a shout out to one of my students here on this chart that he submitted recently. I just kind of blocked out some of the information, but shout out to, to the student for sending this in and just a great illustration of the fake out breakout trade that he took on micro copper on the 60 minute time frame. So notice he was learning that when you saw that breakout to the upside, if you're looking for a fake out breakout, then you actually want to look to take it short as price comes back down. Locked in a nice profit there in that anticipation of that move to the downside. So we'll, we'll discuss the difference between when to look for that breakout and, we would, and when we would anticipate price to keep moving higher versus when we look for the breakout and then the flip against us because then we want to look to get short. All right, just quick breather. Any questions so far? And then we'll start kind of heading into the last 10 or so minutes. I might go over a little bit. Of course, Michael, there's, there's still some more left. So if there's no questions, I'll keep going. If you do have any questions, feel free to, to type them in the chat. All right, so the goal in the flip trade and the course is to go from this. You can see this example here. We've got moving averages. We've got Bollinger Bands. We've got MACD, OBV, volume. So many different things that can make your chart really messy. And I've seen students that have charts like this and I get um, a headache from looking at all this. But the goal is to go from this to this. You see how my charts they have nothing on them. You don't need anything once you actually understand how to read the price charts. So if you have this right now, no worries. We'll kind of baby step you into removing some of that stuff from your chart slowly uh, just to get you to a, a blank chart, which will be nice. Uh, let's see, did I miss your background? And Jeff Manson. So yeah, Jeff and I aren't together anymore. We're, um, I'm doing my own thing now with katetrades.com, but giving me the opportunity to really showcase a new way of looking at the price charts has been able to help me with students and seeing a simpler way of trading. But yeah, background, financial industry, started off as a trader at you know OTA back in the day for, for many years and was just always frustrated by zones not working, not understanding um, why they didn't work and just finding it to be a very stressful you know, sort of field to be in. And a lot of people made it seem really simple and easy, but found out, you know, pretty quickly that wasn't the case. So my goal in this course and the showcase is to show you that there can be a simpler way of trading and we don't need to overcomplicate it more than it is. Collect, good to have you here. All right, so no more indicators and oscillators. Again, if your chart looks like this, we'll probably start to transition into removing all that. No more of that. Complex chart patterns, even things like triple tops, triple bottoms, rounding bottoms, rounding tops. A lot of this stuff I feel like just confuses traders more than it does keeps them in check and being disciplined with a trade plan. So putting a big X through that one as well. Um, you may like those and you, you can incorporate that. I'm just not going to be incorporating it to the course, but keeping it simple. Can you read price action? Can you read a daily chart? Can you read an hourly chart? 
ultimately just looking at a chart for what it is and reading price action based on the candles, the wicks, trend, putting all those pieces together. So I wanted to include this, just kind of a one-off slide, but five steps to becoming a more confident trader. I saw that that was again a lot of the, the, the messages in the chat. So one, master how to read price action and understand why price changes direction. When you understand why and you have the confidence in knowing why price goes up and why price goes down, then everything becomes a lot simpler. Two, have a game plan each day, whether you have a bias to go long or short. So again, that's where I look at the, the futures market open at 6 p.m. Eastern and pretty much have a, a game plan for, do I have a two candle flip? Am I looking to go long? I'll look down at the smaller time frame, find my entry point, and I'll pretty much everything kind of set up and ready ahead of time, which alleviates some of the stress if you are anxious when you are trading. Three, identify the highest probability trade setups and focus on those. Many charts won't have setups. Another thing is we don't want to be stretching ourselves too thin and looking at, you know, 20 different charts and trying to trade all of them. Just focus on the ones that have the best setups. Focus your attention on those. Focus on specific entry points and then look to stay in those long term if you can. Yeah, Andrew said it. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. My favorite quote. Absolutely. And going back to this chart, it's as simple as it can get. Nothing on it, just candles. And once you can read this, you don't need anything else. Four, have a set risk amount per trade that you're comfortable with and don't change it. So again, don't be changing your, your risk based on where you think price is going. Put your, your stop in place. Don't move it. If you get stopped out, that's probably a good thing that's not going to stop you out at a, a higher amount. And then five, stick to only one or two trading strategies. Again, I'm going to be putting all the pieces that I find are the most important ones in my flip trade event um, and really just sticking to a few key things in how we read price action. Once you can master those, then you should start to see the consistency coming. Yeah, so Nancy says, do you have student references who have been successful? Yeah, there we go, markets are closed. I have one here. So this one actually, um, if you wanna send me an email, Nancy, I can give you some more. There's some on the website, katetrades.com. If you wanna check out those, there's some that I've been posting in some of the advertising that I've been using. Um, over the past couple of weeks and months. So I would say find it there and then also some on the website, but I wanted to include this one just from Joy from three days ago to keep it as present as possible. Um, so Joy said, I finally completed three to one trades in micro gold, micro NASDAQ, and I'm currently in micro S&P. So far I've locked in over $1,000, my biggest day ever. Feeling thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Kate, and have a great day. So. I was doing coaching with her, teaching her the two candle flip, working on those entry points, and she has seen tremendous success already. So I'm very proud of her. I'm not sure if Joy's in the room today, but great job on your trade so far. All right, so what's coming up is going to be the highly awaited and anticipated three-day three, three day event. You may have noticed a couple weeks back, I, I did a poll on what you would like to see as far as how long the event to be. Um, ironically, not one person said they wanted a one-day event. It was pretty close between three days and five days, but the winner was a three-day event. So flip trade three-day event, going into a deeper dive on everything that we've talked about today. The event dates are going to be January 23rd, 24th and 25th from 3 to 5 30 p.m eastern time so it's coming up we're about a little less than two weeks away so the breakdown will be we'll have we'll start from three to four with class give you a 10 minute break to stretch grab a coffee then class till five another 10 minute break and then we'll recap what you guys learned uh, for the last 20 minutes so that'll be the the day-to-day -day breakdown, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 3 to 5.30 Eastern. Again, keeping it a little on the shorter side, just so you guys aren't completely overwhelmed by too much information. And then because 
uh, the five day votes were pretty close as well. I did include a bonus one hour lab to make it kind of like a four day event. That will be Wednesday, January 31st from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Now, this one is going to be important after the three day event. The next week you'll be implementing the lessons learned during the futures market open. So again, futures market opens at 6 p.m. Eastern. Why this our lab is going to be key is because we'll use the first 30 minutes to set up and prepare for the futures market open at six. And then we can start seeing how we're going to splice into those trades during the first 30 minutes. So this is really prime time to be to, tr to be trading and implementing the two candle flip. So this is going to be that lab where we put all the pieces together. Yeah, Trey will be recorded. So you'll get the recordings from the three day event as well as the, the one hour lab. Again, highly encourage everyone who signs up for this to join the lab because you will be implementing it during that futures market open, which I stressed already that that's going to be a key time to be trading to get into some trade setups ahead of time. All right, topics covered, just kind of briefly go through these. Um, the two candle flip zones, which are our strong reversal patterns. We've seen continuation versus reversals. So there's a lot more than just the two candle flip, I promise you. Um, so as we go throughout the course, you'll learn that, you know, the two candle flip is that reversal pattern. We'll also look at continuation patterns to trade with the trend. Specific entry points resulting in increased accuracy. So we'll be very specific based on the two candle flip exit points. To find your max risk per trade, we'll work on the trade plan you'll get in the three-day event. Targets based on very specific price patterns. Learn how to stay in trades longer. So which ones are going to be longer running trades versus which ones are going to be shorter term. The fake out breakouts I mentioned. So learn when these occur versus just a normal breakout trade. The wiki areas is one of my favorites. Um, it can show you where there's actually a, a whole lot of buying and a whole lot of selling going on. So we want to pay attention to those and then be able to maneuver the markets when you learn how to read price action. So what you get as far as the three-day event, again, January 23rd, 24th, and 25th from 3 to 5.30 Eastern. Um, what you'll get is the, the live three-day event you get the one hour bonus lab from 5.30 to 6.30 Eastern on January 31st. So in total, you'll get the four days of recordings, all course content and supplementary materials. You'll have the trade plan template that we talked about and then access to the online community discord group. So for the three day event and the bonus lab for the three days, it's gonna be 495. I wanted to do a special offer just because I know you guys, I'm sure, know other traders and students who may be interested in this course. So if you do refer a friend who registers and you both register, instead of $4.95, you'll get it for, for $3.95. And then, of course, if you're in the live trading, you'll automatically get the $3.95 offer. Otherwise, it's $4.95. Uh, you can scan the QR code to register. It's also on the website now. So to register you can either scan that qr code or go to katetrades.com and it'll be the second tab at the top which is the flip trade click on that and it'll give you again all the details that i'm giving you now for the three-day event to register there's a link there that you can click and then also if you scroll down uh, just some more details so again, $3.95 for live trading students. And if you refer a friend who registers as well, you both will get the $100 refund. Um, that one, The refund will be given after you purchase. So if you do buy it, just shoot me an email and say you bought it and you're either in the live trading room or you referred another student, and then I'll give you the, the credit afterwards. So again, that's on the website, ktrades.com. And then click on the tab, the flip trade or scan the QR code. Uh, let's see. All right, so it's coming up. Mark your calendars. Again, January 23rd, 24th, and 25th. That is not next week, the week after, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 3 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. 
three-day three event includes the bonus lab on the 31st from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. And then once you take this course, you'll start understanding where we're looking for those key turning points. This trade we took on the S&P in our live trading session uh, just three days ago, had a nice move to the upside and trading with the trend. Now you kind of know a little bit more why you know we we're looking for that long trade, and it all boils down to the two candle flip zone. Any questions? Let's see. I think I got all the questions. So yes, it will be recorded. You'll get all the recordings um, to sign up. Four ninety five if you're not in live trading and you don't have a friend that you want to to get registered. Four ninety five if you do have a friend who registers and you're in live trading, um, then you get it for the three ninety five. See, hey Jerry, is the two candle flip strategy subjective or objective? What will be some of the learning curves? Good question. I'm all about objectivity, not subjective. So again, the, the two candle flip is very specific. Where we look for the two candle flip is also important. Um, location is going to be key, but very sub or objective in that we just look for red and green, where does it close? And then we'll look for our entry points based on the smaller time frames. Yeah, I'm always, I always prefer objectivity versus subjective um, as far as being very specific with the two candle flip, what's going on in the price charts. As I mentioned at the beginning of the class, it's just taking it step by step, candle by candle, seeing what's going on. We have a flip, look to go long, identifying corrections identifying opposing two candle flips and just kind of walking down this path day after day to find those key entry points in the markets. Uh, let's see, Demetrius, do you take PayPal? Yes, yeah, so that link will, I just want to show you. Um, so it does, it is through PayPal and it does take it. If you click the flip trade tab, let me post the link in the chat so you have it. Um, so click that link, and then when you click the click here button, um, it will take you to PayPal. You can either pay that way, or there's also an option to pay with debit or credit card as well. I know some people come here and they, they ask me, is there any other way other than PayPal? Yes, there is. Just click the, the button below, and you can do by debit or credit card or through PayPal. Let's see. How do we join the live training? Yeah, I'll Post the link in the chat for that as well. So live trading is going to be ktrades.com again. And I'll just post that in the chat so you can access the website. It's kate, K-A-I-T-T-R-A-D-E-S.com. And then from there, the flip trade is going to be that tab after the home button. The second tab is going to be for live trading. If you want to join in on the live trading sessions, they'll make more sense um, once you learn about the two candle flip. And then I also have a tab for one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you want to get registered for those, I'm pretty busy with the coaching. And then if you click on more, there's also a contact button. You can click that if you want to send me an email or if you have any questions. Um, that again is going to be under more contact. Just put your email, your message there. If you have any questions at all about what I've covered today, feel free to send me an email. This will get posted on YouTube and everyone in the room will get a email with the, the YouTube recording link. All right. I think I've covered anything. If there's no other questions, apologies. I've kept you over about 10 minutes. Um, thank you all so much for joining me. Again, an amazing turnout. I really appreciate you all coming. Any questions, feel free to email me. My email is tradingcoach at ktrades.com. I'll put that in the chat for you guys as well. Tradingcoach at ktrades.com. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Aldo, Jeff, Shelly, Ann, Jerry, good to see you, Deb, Andrew. So good having you all here. Thank you for joining. Uh, stay on the lookout for the recording so you can watch it again if you want. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.